In this tutorial, what we're going to look at is learning the first few steps to a photo editing process in Photoshop CS3. If you've watched any of the other tutorials, you have know <coughs> you already know some of the basics. And the next step that we're going to look at is using levels and histograms. Um, and we'll review those other first steps in just a few minutes. Um, but as, as I've kind of talked about before, what we're looking at with Photoshop is we want to make our very broad general changes first and then we get more specific as we go on. Um, <clears throat> and levels is one of those broad general changes. So it'll happen quite early in our, our editing process. And what a level adjusts exactly is the intensity of light. Now color is ultimately light so as we make these adjustments it will look as if the color is changing um, <clears throat> if you want to think of it as determining the darkest dark for our shadows and the brightest white for our highlights and then our midtones is everything in between so we get there by going to the image menu adjustments and levels and we'll, I'll walk through this in Photoshop with you also. But that's how we get there. Um, and then this dialog box pops up. And in the center there, we see this chart. And this chart is our histogram. And there are 256 little columns there that make up this chart, each one representing uh, a different channel of the RGB um, color mode. And the higher, here it is, just blowing up, the higher end here, this means there's more intensity. We're on the right end here, there's very few, so that's a low intensity. So the, the more intense a certain portion of this scale is, the higher this, this graph is going to be in that area. You're going to have three triangles here. There's a black, a gray, and a white. This black represents the intensity of your darkest black. The white controls the intensity of your brightest white. And the gray is, stands for midtones. I like to think of this as a teeter-totter. And this is center. So generally you want it balanced, but as we'll see, that's not going to be the case for every scenario. This is not an exact science. There is an art to this. Um, so in this case, using the teeter-totter analogy, you can see that the heavy kid, there's a lot of intensity going on over here. So this is this represents our, the heavy kid on the teeter-totter. And it's all on top of this end, on the black end. So we know in this image that it's a lopsided teeter-totter. It's going to be dark because it's all, all of our intensity is on the dark portion. So if I go to the next, so we don't need to actually see the image to know that what it's going to be like is going to be a dark image. And I've taken some of these pictures from um, a book published by uh, Deke McLeland and <clears throat> he put in this this great example here that I found. It shows three different images um, and the, the corresponding histogram at the bottom here. So in image one, we can see the histogram on the right side, and it's weighing down on where that white triangle would be. So we know that this is a lopsided teeter-totter. We can see that it's washed out. So it's, it's too white, so we would have to make changes there. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. So in C, We'll see all the intensities on the left side where that black triangle would be. So it's going to be too dark, and, and we can see that it is. And then in B, it's nice and balanced. Um, good intensity of colors over the center, and then our left and our right are, are fairly balanced. By nature, it's going to have some dark spots because of the shadows, but this is a well-balanced picture. 
Here we have, this is going to be an example, I'm going to show you an image after of what this looks like. And by looking at the histogram, we know, because all the intensity is over the black triangle, that this is going to be a darker image. Now you might think that it's going to be bad, but let's take a look. So again, here's a dark picture. Um, but it doesn't look bad. This is the effect that we want from this photograph. So again, here's a histogram. Just because it's not balanced, because it's not a ba balanced teeter-totter, does not mean that the image is going to be horrible. Let's look at another example. By looking at this one, we would think the image is going to be just way too bright. And you look at it, it's, it's definitely bright, but it looks good. That's the effect that the um, the editor was looking for. So the, the main thing here is to understand levels are not are not an exact science. There's, there's no formula for it. It's just to be used as a guide. And this is a very complex process. So as we'll see when we get into Photoshop, um, Photoshop, to the, the Adobe agrees that this is not an easy process. So they've made an automated feature for us, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up my, my picture here. And image, duplicate, that's the first step that I always do. And then I'll just ask you to rename it. Go ahead and rename it. My second step is to unlock this background layer and rename that. I like to do that so that way I have full control over my background layer. Then the third step is to uh, make any size adjustments that I need to. And one of the ways that I can do that is by using the crop tool. And I'll show you more advanced ways to do it in, in future tutorials, but for now we're just going to look at the crop tool. And there's two ways to, to use this. There's a free form way where you just click and drag, you get what you want. The parts that are going to get cut out are going to be shaded. And the parts you keep are in here. If you want to make adjustments after you do it, you can just click and drag on the anchor points. Then to, to accept it, you click the check mark. If you wanted to start over, just click the cancel button. So I'm going to click that check mark just to show you the process here. And now we get only what we wanted. So that's one way to do it. There's only two really basic ways to use this crop tool. Um, the other way here is, let's say we were taking this to the printer and we wanted a 5 by 7 image. We could put in uh, width 5 inches, height 7 inches. And now when I click and drag, it's going to keep it in that aspect ratio. It will be locked in at that ratio. So I'm going to get the full width here, and then adjust it so my image is centered, and then I'm going to click OK. So if you take it to a printer without doing that, sometimes they might cut it, and it might not be a picture that you want cut it out, part of the picture that you might not want cut out or they might stretch it or shrink it to fit. So this ensures that when we take it to the printer, everything we want will get printed exactly the way that we want it. Um, so now for my next step. So we've talked about duplicating the image. Step one, step two is unlocking the background layer. Step three is adjusting the size. And then our fourth step here, adjustment levels. I'm going to go here and we can look at how this works. We have our three triangles here. Let's just kind of play around with them. We're going to click and drag, see how it makes our image darker because it's adjusting our teeter totter. All the intensity is on top of this side, so it's going to make it heavy. It's going to weigh it down. The more the more pixels that we put on onto that side, the darker that it becomes. 
Same thing with this side, except it'll make it brighter. So the more we put, the more pixels we put on that side of the teeter-totter, the brighter it's going to become. And then we can adjust the middle to try and bring out the colors a little bit more. So ideally what you want is a nice balanced effect. Good general rule of thumb before you make any changes. See if the original is better or worse just by clicking on the preview box. The other thing you should look for is details in the brightest whites. So can you still see the folds in her dress? Um, also take the darkest black. Can you still see the details in there? Which in this case are going to be the shadows underneath the balloon. So you can sit around. You can sit around and play with this for a while. Or you have another option. In this case I'm just going to click cancel. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a complicated process or it can be at f for beginners so Photoshop has given us the luxury of an automated levels so again image menu adjustments levels auto levels click on that and Photoshop will do it for us which in my opinion and I'm not um, doing high-end photography edits but in my opinion, 90% of the, 85 to 95 percent of the time, this is good enough. So one in ten times, you're gonna have to go in there, adjustments to that manual procedure, and make the adjustments yourself, or maybe fine tune it, just tweak it a little bit. Um, but in this case, I I like what Photoshop came up with. I can, I'm looking at my brightest white. I can still see detail in there. I can still see detail in, in the darkest shadows. Um, if I really wanted to get picky, I could play around with that a little bit. But as I said, this, this auto feature, pretty handy, especially for beginners. And while we're here, our fifth step is auto contrast. And after you do auto levels, depending on the picture, you're not going to see a lot of changes. In this case, there is almost none. Um, that's because that auto levels usually takes care of most of that. But again, Photoshop also gives us a manual way to do this, and this is through the brightness and contrast section. And I think I would maybe bump up the brightness just a little bit click OK so we have those are our five steps that we should always start with duplicate the image unlock the background layer adjust the size in this case we use a crop tool then we do our auto levels and then we go back to image adjustments auto contrast those are our first five steps that we'll always do now just as a little bit of review, what I'm going to do is, um, those are our broad steps. I'll, I'll kind of, we'll take a look at one specific step. And we looked at this. This, again, is review, select, color range. I want to select these pink balloons. And I'm going to single them out. So that way, I'm going to, I'm going to gray out everything else. I'm going to copy this into its own layer. And just take a look at my selection. There we go. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go to the background layer and adjust my hue saturation. And that looks like a pretty good picture. I could have could clean up this selection a little bit, but for sake of time, that, that's pretty good. So you get the point. You do your first five steps. And then we can start getting more and more specific and detail-orientated.